Over in Malaysia, Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim is finalizing his cabinet, saying a formal announcement will be made in two to three days. The king has granted him an audience this morning. Local media reports citing unnamed sources say that the new leader, though, could unveil a partial lineup later today, since he was sworn in as the country's 10th prime minister more than a week ago. Anticipation has been growing over who he will pick for his unity government. Key appointments, such as the deputy prime minister, finance minister and home affairs minister, will be closely watched. Negotiations are, are still ongoing, are reportedly still ongoing with party leaders, but there's increased urgency to name and swear in the new cabinet before the king leaves tomorrow on an overseas trip. Mr. Anwar is looking to restore stability and ensure confidence in his government. He'll also want to balance that with retaining the support of various parties and coalitions that back his unity government. His leadership, though, will soon be put to the test. The prime minister has said a vote of confidence in him will be tabled when parliament reopens on December the 19th. It's been revealed the vote will be the eighth item on the agenda. Mr. Anwar called for it after Perikata Nacional Chairman Muhyiddin Yassin challenged him to prove he has enough support among lawmakers. Now for more insight, let's speak with Dr. Nursharil Saat, Senior Fellow at the IC's Yusuf Ishak Institute. Uh, so how are you expecting the cabinet to be unveiled today or partially at least? And what and who are you watching out for? Well, I think we have heard many um, speculation that um, the cabinet will be named soon and uh, strong likelihood that uh, the cabinet may be named today. Uh, but again, it's been a long uh, week for Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim. And of course, the question now is whether he will name a full cabinet or will he take uh, uh, the example of uh, the previous Pakatan Harapan government where Tun Dr. Mahathir Muhammad named uh, some of the key positions in the cabinet first and then unveil the other members of the cabinet. I think uh, what we should closely watch is who uh, will be the ministers appointed for the key positions. Uh, for instance, the finance minister is something is someone that we need to, to take a closer look. Uh, and also uh, other important cabinet positions such as the Ministry of Home Affairs. And since the Malaysia is also recovering from the COVID-19 pandemic, the health ministry would be also an important uh, position for many watchers. Yeah, Mr. Anwar will want to instill confidence and restore stability, uh, yet satisfy and retain the support of his various coalitions and parties after one of the most polarizing elections in the country. That's a tough act, isn't it? Well, certainly it's a tough act. This is, uh, I mean, what, what Malaysia is experiencing now is unprecedented. I mean, this unity government. Uh, I mean, in the past, uh, governments are formed very quickly because of a simple majority. I mean, uh, gone are the days of Barisan National, days where they won the two-thirds majority and it could form a government easily. I mean, even in the last uh, Pakatan Harapan government in 2018, they were able to comfortably form the government immediately um, by, by securing the simple majority. But for this case, for Pakatan Harapan, I mean, it's a unity government and there's a lot of uh, negotiations that has to be uh, carried out uh, trying to appease certain quarters in this coalition. Uh, it, it's, it's a fragile uh, government and uh, anything could change if uh, parties decide to, to leave the coalition. And hence, I think this is a form of negotiations that has to, to take place before this government can be formed. So I think on the one hand, Malaysians are expecting uh, this government to provide some form of stability. But I think the first hurdle is to secure this current government and the coalitions. You wrote a commentary piece on CNA.Asia saying that Anwar has signaled that change is underway in the country in just one week since being sworn in. How so? Well, I think he has made uh, many good moves in his first week. I mean, he is a very experienced politician. He was once a deputy prime minister under the Mahathir administration. So I think he's used to this. And I think he's got a good first week. He understands the ground. I mean, he has made several announcements that uh, that uh, could be seen as populist, but then I think that these are important signals in the, uh, for, for Malaysia. I mean, the Malaysia is recovering uh, from COVID-19. I mean, economic-wise, uh, I think the, the government has to instill stability. And at the end of the day, is how to... To uh, for the prime minister to identify himself with the, the the problems of the common people, and I think he's tried to trim the size of the government. He has signaled that. I mean, he is he's also committed to prevent wastages in in government, and he has also uh, appealed to 
the public service to to work with him closely. These are important signals. Uh, we expect prime ministers to be uh, tested within the first 100 days, but it seems that in the first week, I think he has, he has made some good uh, inroads in trying to change Malaysia. Now, Mr. Anwar has repeatedly spoken about the importance of having a clean government free from uh, corruption. How does that square with the numerous court cases against some high-profile individuals that uh, could yet form part of his cabinet? Well, this is a test for Anwar Ibrahim. I mean, on the one hand, he wants to trim the size of the cabinet. He wants, I mean, during the campaigning period, that, uh, you know, he has, has, has uh, said this very clearly, that he wants a clean government, a transparent government. But on the other hand, I think the nature of the coalition itself, it's it's big, it's huge, and he has somehow or rather uh, had to, to appeal to his opponents uh, that he was campaigning strongly against uh, during during the last uh, election. So this is a tough act, it's a balancing act. But I think uh, what Malaysians are expecting from this government is, of course, principles and values more than, than politics. I think the, the, the bigger aim is, of course, to unite the country. Uh, and, and, of course, to tackle the important issues, the everyday life of the people. So I think this is a major priority for the Anwar Ibrahim uh, government. Your principles over politics. Uh, Mr. Anwar has also been paying a close attention to the optics in his first week, from foregoing his prime minister's salary to using a cheap black pen favoured by students at his swearing-in. And he's now told people not to send him gifts. Why is all this important to him? Well, this this is important. I think he has to be the government of the day has to be sensitive to the daily needs of the people. I mean, people on the ground are struggling, uh, of course, due to the current uh, high uh, cost of living. And I think it's, in, it's an important signal for the leadership to show that they are with the people. So I think these are important signs. Uh, but of course, at the end of the day, even though these are initial steps, they are important optics, uh, as, as you mentioned, but the reality of the day is, of course, uh, later. I mean, first and foremost, this is only the first hurdle. Uh, he has yet to cross the second hurdle, which is to form the cabinet, and people will then assess the kind of ministers and policies, and then these policies have to go through parliament. Uh, so I think this is only the first step, the first hurdle, but I think there are many, many hurdles ahead uh, as Malaysia uh, goes to recovery. And just quickly, what are some of those hurdles that lie in wait? Well, of course, if you look at it uh, politically, I mean, forming the government is one. Who who is the uh, who occupies the important cabinet positions? The other, uh, of course, what kinds of policies? Whether the policies will be reversed? What are some of the continuities and some changes that this current government would like to undertake? And then this would have to be tabled to to parliament. And this is only the political side of things. Uh, at the end of the day, I think it's more of the operationalization of these policies on the ground, whether the current government is able to work closely with the bureaucracy to ensure that the policies are implemented well on the ground. So these are, these are some of the hurdles. And of course, the political challenges and how this current government can stay united and uh, at least last for the next five years. That's another challenge because since 2018, as we know, we saw three prime ministers in, in Malaysia. And of course, Malaysians would not want to see a repeat of those uh, very uncertain episodes. Yes, lots of turmoil and reshaping in the um, political landscape for Malaysia. Let's see how it uh, pans out over the first a few days, first of all. Uh, thank you very much for that, Dr. Nashar Al-Saad from the ICS Yusuf Ishak Institute. Thank you for talking to us.